How are my favorite people doing? If you are excited for the calculation scores, give me a yes! Jed, Lucy, how are you, Bobby? It's been two weeks. Where the time gone? I have missed you all. Desmond, Greg, how are you? Nadia, Lola, yes, how are you? Nadia, how are you? Wealth is there. I missed you guys as well. So last week I had to miss because I was in Sheffield and I live in Glasgow and that is like five hours away and I couldn't make it back in time. I mean, it wasn't going to happen, was it? So last week was a miss. I missed you all, but I have been working hard. I know Marvin said that I was skiving, but I will step on all skiving. I've been working hard. I have in my hand the mock that I am going to give you all next week. So that's an online mock, but this is like a PowerPoint, so I'm going through all my slides, basically. Fantastic. So who is ready to start? If you are, give me a nine, because we are on the ninth week. Give me a... So two weeks ago, guys, we covered dosages and we covered unit conversions and we talked about dosage regimens as well. So who is ready for today's agenda? If you are, give me a one. If you are ready, give me a one. Fantastic. So today, guys, we're going to talk about the structure. There's a bit of a change as well. So I'll talk about that. Who received a few emails from Zoom earlier on today? If you did, give me a Z for Zoom. So I had to add in a webinar. And then I had to change a webinar as well. So you should have got an email from Zoom. If you're here, then you register. And if you're here, then you will have got an email. It might have gone to your junk. So Jade got an email. So today we are doing quantity to supply. We're doing FH kidney function as well. The mock we'll talk about next week. So I'll talk about that next week. There's no point discussing it now. Otherwise, I'll be talking about the same thing five times. And that makes no sense. So the mock webinar, the mock exam itself, we were going to go over the answers on the 3rd of May, but that's changed now. So we're going to do that on the 26th of April. So our last ever webinar will be on the 26th. So if that's clear, guys, give, if that's clear, guys, give me a 26th, if that's clear. So our last webinar, when we go over the mock paper, that's going to be on the 26th of April. So, who is ready for the first tutorial? If you're ready for the first tutorial, give me a one if you guys are ready for the first tutorial. I think quite a lot of us are seeming to be joining late because that number was quite low and now it's starting to rise steadily. But you guys can catch up on the replay. Danielle, man like Uber, man like Danielle. Danielle was in Birmingham. Birmingham was fantastic. If you were there as well, give me a five. Birmingham was well cool, man. It was so much fun. It was brilliant. Give her the dance. Give her the dance. Give her the dance. I'm about to fall off my chair there. Oh, my word. So quantities to supply. Basically, it's questions that are based on quantities to supply. So how much you're giving, when you're giving, how much of it are you giving? Very common in pharmacy. Uh, they're very realistic questions. So they will ask you questions about this in the exam. You're going to see prescriptions, guys, where they don't give you a quantity where they don't give you quantity and you have to work out the quantity that's pharmacy that's the job guys that's what you have to be doing in a few months time i think that's very exciting though i know some of you may feel nervous but for you guys i am very very excited i know danielle you did so in this question they'll give you a dose they'll give you how much the patient is taking for example they'll give you the name and the strength of medicine as well and they'll give you all the info you need to work out the total quantity and that quantity can be different. So it can be in tablets, it can be in capsules, it can be, it can be a suspension, it can be anything, guys. So the quantity can be anything you want it to be. Fantastic. I have a short example question. If you guys are ready for that, just give me a two. Just give me a two if you guys are ready for that. That's fantastic. So I'm going to give you two minutes, but I'm not going to do like in timers and stuff. Just answer the question the best you can. And then two minutes later, 
we will go over it. So your two minutes starts now, please. That should say if a patient takes 30 milligrams a day for a week. Yes, guys, what was our answer for this question? 42, 42, 42, that is fantastic. This question gives you all info that you need. So it gives you the strength of the tablet. That pen's a bit light, isn't it? It needs to be a bit thicker. So it gives you the strength of the tablet. Uh, how what the overall dose? It's just 30 milligrams a day and how long for? So a week, so you have 30 times seven, which is 210. I don't know why I'm writing it out. I've already got it written down on the next slide. Let's move forward. So let's go forward on to the next slide. So 30 times seven. So 30 times seven, that's 210. You need 210 in total. And then you need five milligrams per tablet. So 210 divided by five gives you 42. And that's all there is guys. So these are, the, I won't say easy marks because no mark is easy. You have to work for every mark that you get. But I would say these are the less difficult marks compared to some of the other questions. Work here nice and slow. You write everything down. You will be okay. And they're not unreasonable because you will see stuff like this on the day job. You will see prescriptions like this. You will see prescriptions. Prednisolone. And you have to work out how much it is. So penicillin, five milligrams, and then 30 mg, and it's for a week. I mean, that's quite nice writing, depending on depending on what you normally see in the day job. Another way of doing it, and Akib, that is very scary. Akib has Akib has uh, done exactly what I was going to do next. So you can work out the number of tablets first. So you've got 30 divided by five, so it's six tablets tablets a day, six tablets a day times seven is 42. So there is two ways of doing it indeed. Yeah, so months and years, depending on the time frame in the question, that is how you need to answer the question. The second part of the tutorial, so this is about creating clearance. Has anyone done these types of questions already in practice? If you have, give me a two, give me a two if you have on this kind of question. These kinds of questions as well, it's all about putting the right number in the right place. So I've separated it out, I've made it all color coded as well. You get the equation in the exam. I don't want anyone asking me, is the equation in the exam? Because it will be in the exam. I am tired of saying the question, equation in the exam or not, because it is in 
the exam is in the exam. It is in the exam. What's happened to my writing? My writing's gone terrible. It used to be quite nice at one point. I think it's a left-handed thing, isn't it? Like it's in the exam, guys. No one better ask me. I know someone will uh, because they're on the wind up, but it's in the exam. And the only trick is working out IBW. That's correct. So I'm reading my mind as well. So in these questions, if they don't give you an IBW, then you assume that the kilograms in the question, that is your IBW. But if they give you the formula for IBW, then you have to use that formula using the information in the, in the question to work out your IBW and then using it for the question. So the equation is as follows. It's 140 minus the age. So minus the age in years. And then it's times by the weight, and then it's times by the constant. So that's 1.23 for male patients, 1.04 for females. And then it's divided by the serum creatinine, which is at the bottom. You put the numbers in, you get a creatinine clearance, and that is all you have to do. Fantastic. If that's a bit clearer now, guys, give me a two if it is. The main thing you have to do is to make sure the numbers go in the right place. I don't want anyone putting in or getting the age and the weight mixed up. If you guys do that, I will not be happy. I am making that very, very clear. Not done four years of this nonsense, and a year of your hardest year of your entire life, only to put it right, only to put the age and the weight the wrong way around. Is that is that fair enough, guys? If that's fair enough, just give me a one. Don't make that mistake in the exam, guys. Please don't. All this hard work, can you put it the wrong way around? What's the point? It's the point. So just put it in the right way around. They even tell you where the numbers go. So just nice and slow to get the right number, put it in the right place and pass the exam. As simple as that. So male patients read the question, female patients read the question, use the right constant, fantastic. A little bit of theory. So serum creatinine is to do with how much creatinine is in your blood. Creatinine clearance, which is uh, the overall, that is a measure of your kidney function. So depending on your creatinine clearance and depending on the medicine in question, your dose may be changed. So has anyone seen that any questions? You get the creatinine clearance equation and then you get like an SPC extract and then your dose has to change because uh, the creatinine clearance isn't high enough or it's too low and then you got to pick the right one and things like that. So that is what we'll talk about in the coming slide as well. Fantastic. So make sure you put the right numbers in the right places. And sometimes you need to use that number, the crayon place that you figured out for later on in the question. Happens a lot in practice as well. Fantastic. So guys, let's put this one together. So let me know your answer. I'm not doing any timers because you need a calculator. So whenever you have your answer ready, please share your answer with me. I got 83.2 and I've got 82.4 and I've got a one point something something as well. That doesn't make any sense at all. So you have, you have this. We will do it one step at a time. So who wants me to go through it one step at a time? Give me a one if you would like me to go through it one step at a time because that is the best way of doing things. Fantastic. We have 140 minus the patient's age. So 140 minus 60, it is highlighted. So 140 minus 60, that's the age so far. So we have one thing so far. Moving forward, you've got the patient's weight. So the weight is 60 as well. And then we have the constant. So that's 1.04 because they're a female patient. And then we have 60 because that is the serum creatinine. 
You get all that, you put all that information in, and that gives you 83.283.283.2. So, where are the mistakes made? The mistakes are made using the wrong constant. Please highlight it in the exam, guys, or please write it down. Or if you get the age and the weight mixed up, or if you don't use a certain type of number, for example, the age, weight, or constant. In the exam, you have to make sure that all the numbers legit add up because sometimes the GPAC will give you the patient's age in months. But what does our age need to be for this equation to work? Is it months or is it days or is it years? Fantastic. So have a look. So keep an eye out for that, guys. They can do that in the exam. So age needs to be in years always, always in years and nothing else. Sometimes they will catch you out with your serum creatinine. So sometimes they'll catch you with serum creatinine. What they'll do is it should be in micromoles per litre, but they'll give it to you in millimoles per ml, something along those lines. Then you have to convert the units so they equal micromoles per litre. So units have to be micromoles per liter. Exactly, guys. If it is, just give me a one if that's clear. Give me a one if that's clear. And then we will move forward on to the next slide. Fantastic. So guys, if you're feeling more confident, give me a nine. You got some questions coming up. They give everything, Leila. I just said everything, everything they give you in the exam. Fantastic. So. Last time, which was two weeks ago, I keep saying that two weeks ago, it feels wrong. It's very rare for me to have an off week in a webinar. I think it's the first time ever, to be honest. So two weeks ago, anyone remember how we did eight questions all at the same time? If you do, just give me an eight. If you do, who found that useful? If you found that useful, give me a 10 if you found that useful. If you didn't find it useful, you didn't like it, the truth is, I don't care, guys. That's how it's going to be in the exam. You're going to get 40 questions thrown at you constantly. You're going to go in the exam, you're going to click question one, and then you're going to be click again, and you're going to see question two. You're going to click, you're going to click, you're going to click, and it's going to go all the way until 40. So the best I can do is make it eight. So that is what I have done. I wasn't skydiving in Meadow Hall, Daniel. I was very, very busy. I was very, very busy. We were getting loads of work done. We barely had time to eat food. It was crazy. Time really flew by. So, guys, if you guys are ready, give me an eight because we have eight questions coming up. Give me an eight. You guys are going to get 24 minutes to attempt eight questions. Your 24 minutes starts now, please.
Eight questions finished, guys. If you can see me, give me an eight. By the way, you've done eight questions. I know some of you are fasting as well. So please have a drink of water before we continue. If you have a drink near you and you have had a sip, give me an eight. So I know you guys are ready. You're pumped up to go through eight questions. A sip of water is very, very important. Water is hydration. Water is life. So, we started the course almost 10 weeks ago. Has anyone noticed their calculations getting better? If you do, give me a me. This topic, when I asked in the first webinar back in January, this was the questions, the topics that were least likely to that we struggled with. So that's why it's at the end. I know everyone's gotten much better in calculations over that last eight weeks as well. So you guys are going to be brilliant and you are going to smash this exam. Did anyone struggle with any questions? Please let me know which ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have a feeling I know which ones you'll put down, but we'll spend more time on them and we'll go from there as well. So please let me know which questions. Yeah, so five was very, very difficult. Seven as well. So seven was also tricky. But yeah, so the question five, there was a lot of information on there. But when we go through it, I'll show you that it wasn't as bad. It's just like you see that was you see so much information written in front of you. You sort of freeze and you're like, what do I do? And then you're like, ah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then you just start crying, which is never a good thing. That's OK. It's OK to get them wrong. But as long as we learn, that is the most important thing. Fantastic. So let's go through the questions, guys. Question one. Anyone struggle with this one? If you did, give me a zero. If you struggle with this question, give me a zero. If you struggle with this one, that's okay. We'll go through it. So with this question, guys, it's a tazadi being given to a 50-year-old, and I need to hide these floating controls because, um, because I can't see anything at all. So let's hide these floating controls. So 50 years because they're a female patient, very important, very, very important. The patient's weight is very important as well. Their serum creatinine level is very important. By the way, that does not match the units that's required. So if you've used 0.152, your answer is wrong, unfortunately. I mean, I only said it five minutes ago, guys, you need to be able to see, uh, match the units with everything. Leon has put down, couldn't see most of the questions very clearly. I'm not too sure what you're using, but everyone sees what I see in front of me and it was very clear. So your device will be small or you're using your phone. I don't know, but it will be okay on the replay video. And the patients they gave us heptazidine for bacterial meningitis, the calcium recommended dose for the patient in milligrams. So if you could answer it, what was our answer for this one? With this one, guys, if you read the question, which we are doing now because we've been doing this for nine weeks, so you can't answer without reading it. When you read the question, when you read the question, I'm getting loaded of answers there. Is that all we've got? 6,000? Because the answer's not 6,000. Answer's not 6,000. Anyone got any more answers? Come on, guys. Please, please. I've got 2,000 coming up. That's fine. That's great. Excellent. So with these questions, Remember last time I mentioned it's okay to read a question more than once. So it's not like read the question once and that's all you can do. You can never look at the question ever again. It is okay to read the question more than once. That's because you have to go back and forth, make sure, make sure that your numbers are right. So everything in the question is key to answer it basically. If the patient has been given bacterial meningitis, where's my keypad? Where's my highlighter gone? bacterial meningitis so you know that bacterial meningitis is important so you need to know bacterial meningitis is important does that make sense guys if it does give me a one if that makes sense so in the question it will tell you which condition is bacterial meningitis so you look under bacterial meningitis only bacterial meningitis not pneumonia and neutropenia and cystic fibrosis and something else and bacteremia only meningitis and nothing else that's the first step the next step is to make sure that you have to work out the crowding clears collect correct correctly correctly 
and then you have to use the right number. You have to use the right number to then calculate the right dose. So it's one gram every 12 hours. So it's two grams every 12 hours. So it's two grams every 24 hours. So the answer is 2,000 milligrams. If you've got 6,000, what's happened is that you haven't used this table to calculate your new dose. So your so your cryogenic clearance is under 50, so it's 49.2 something. So what's happened is, is that you need to use this line, you need to use that line, and your dose is one gram every 12 hours. So that's the dose that you have to use. So this replaces this. So we don't, so once you've worked out cryogenic clearance, then it's 50 to 31. So Negan, that's in between. So 50 to 31. That's in between again, so 49.2 something or whatever it was, it's in between 50 and 31. Oh, yeah! Megan, you are a funny one. You are a funny, funny one. That was funny. Asha, I will show you how to change it in just a minute. So 49.26, that's fantastic. So when you work out the credit clearance, when you have the credit clearance, this dose is useless. This dose is useless, useless, because you have to use the new dose that's based on the credit clearance that you've worked out. Is that clear, guys? If it is, just give me a one if that is clear. Fantastic. So let's go through this. Uh, make sure that your units match. Make sure that your units match. So your serum creatinine has to be in micromoles per litre, not millimoles per litre. So you have to change it from... You have to change it from millimoles to micromoles. How do we do that, guys? So how do we change something from millimoles to micromoles? Like Lucy's put divide by a thousand. You divide by a thousand, you times by a thousand. You are going from a big to a small, so you times by a thousand, you times by a thousand, one thousand, one thousand, one thousand, one thousand. Don't get this wrong in the exam, guys. Please don't, because if I do find I got this wrong in the exam, I will find you and I will get my woolly shoe. I won't hit you with it. I will just say you shouldn't have got that wrong. I won't commit any violent offences. Fantastic. So Lucy's done it right on this question. So one... 0.152 Asher times a thousand is 152 micromoles per 1000 mil. So it's 152 micromoles per liter. I'm not getting stressed. I'm just telling you, but I still know that some of us here are going to get that wrong in the exam. And I'll be thinking, what was the point of me even saying it? I just want you guys to pass. That's all I want. And I don't want anything else. After we have our 152 micromoles per liter, does everyone get the question up until this stage? If you do give me a one, if you, if you understand it up until this point. So you've got your 152 micromoles per litre. After that, guys, you've got everything. So you have your patient's age, you have your patient's weight, you've got your constant, which is in the question, the previous slide, and you have everything. You have your zero creatinine as well. You have everything. You get it on the calculator, you get 49.263. If you got that, give me a 49.263. You look at the table, look at the table that is between 50 and 31. And then from there, you work out it's one gram every 12 hours. So two grams every 24. Two grams is 2,000 milligrams. So if anyone struggle with this now and it makes a bit more sense and it's a bit clearer, just give me a one if that is now a little bit clearer. With these questions, creatinine clearance, then use the table that's in the SPC, use that dose to work out your overall dose. So the creatinine clearance is 49 point. I've just put that in there for the sake of it, but it's under 50 and more than 31, so you have to use this part. So you have to use the correct dose, guys, the correct one, the correct, correct one. Who wants a bit of a shortcut? If you want a bit of a shortcut, just give me a one. This won't work with every question. 
So this won't work with every question, um, but I will show you something. I think you guys will know um, what I'm about to say anyway. Danielle, write it down, man. Write it. Write. Write. Writing is your friend. You are not a supercomputer. You are a human. So with this question, our serum creatinine is 152. Uh, if you got that part, just give me a 152. Uh, 152, so your serum creatinine is 152. So on this slide, you have 152. So that is serum creatinine. So that's micromoles per liter. And that's 150 to 200, so it's 152. And then from there, you can work out your answer. So you can look at the SPC and then work out your answer. That's fantastic, actually, that's brilliant. That won't work with every question, I don't think. But if it does, then that will give you an opportunity to calculate your answer quicker, but also give you an opportunity to all check over your answer as well. Great stuff. Anyone got any questions? Uh, if you do, please ask. If not, just give me a two. Let's move forward on to question number two. Yeah, so that, would, that shortcut won't work with every single question because not every single question is like that in terms of its SPCs but it will work it will work with some of them fantastic question number two guys let's do this so ethambutol is an antibiotic for tuberculosis chemo i just showed you the shock on the previous slide it's the, it was a table chemo did your laptop crash or something but yes yeah, so you have a serum cranium 152 that's 152 and then you do one gram every 12 hours two grams, 24 hours, 2,000 milligrams. There is your shortcut. Can we move forward, guys? If we can, give me a two if we can move forward. Fantastic. So question number two, guys, uh, what's important here? We have ethambutol. So ethambutol is given for the first time, and the patient's weight is 60. And how many parts of ethambutol do you need for a 42-day supply? Fantastic, Jade is on the money. Jade is not messing about at all. So you have to choose the right section. So you have two separate doses there. You have your primary treatment and prophylaxis. Why am I pointing when I've got an iPad to sort of highlight my points? And then you have four retreatment. The question will always tell you what part to use. So the question will always tell you. Because guys, if the question doesn't tell you, then it's too ambiguous. Then it's then, then you're like, well, what part do I use? So the question has to make it clear. If you're not sure, you go back to the question, you have a read of it, and then you go from there. Does that make sense, guys? If it does, just give me a two if that makes sense. Always refer to the question. If you like, uh, if you go to the SPC and you see that there's a few different sections and you're like, I don't know which one to choose, go back to the question. Question will tell you. Question will always tell you. The GPC are not expecting to be psychic and work, work out which one it is. They will tell you which one to use, whether to use private treatment or retreatment. Fantastic. So always go back to the question. Let's go through the important parts. So 60 kg, how many packets, two decimal points, and then you have your ethambutol strength, and you have to use the right dose, which is 15 milligrams per kilogram as a single oral dose. And your pack size is 56, 56 tablets per pack. Anyone seen ethambutol at work? If you have, give me a five. I think I've seen ethambutol once in like nine years of pharmacy. So not something that you see often. So you are most more likely to see it if you are in hospital than compared to community but not something that you see too often. And thankfully as well, you don't want people catching TV. So thankfully you don't see it too often. What was our answer for this one, guys? What was our answer? 6.75, fantastic. So we have to work out the dose first because that's how you work out how much you're gonna give someone. 15 times 60. So 15 times 60, that is 900. 900 a day, it's 100 per tablet, so it's nine tablets a day, and you times that by 42, and then you get 6.75 packets. 
First, I rounded it to seven, and then I realized it asked for two decimal places. Negan, I almost caught you out there. That was designed to catch us all out. So I may have caught a few of us out, but I just want you to learn to read the question and answer two decimal points. That's all I want, guys. That's all we want. So you avoid these mistakes in the exam. You can make all the mistakes now. I don't care if you get all the questions wrong in this course, if you get them all wrong, if you get them right in the exam, that's all I care about, guys. You can get them right here, get them wrong afterwards. You can get them wrong here, you can get them right afterwards. If you learn from your mistakes, you get them right. That is all we want in the exam. So we will never do this in the exam. We will, hint what do you mean we will never do this in the exam? I keep running out of time with the SPCs. So if you keep running out of time with the SPCs, what I recommend is you keep, you know, if, if, if you keep going back and forth to the question. Like you see the SPC like well dose, what dose? You go to the question, find out what it's asking for, use that dose. And in the exam, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to use your find feature so you can use control and F. I think that will save you a little bit of time as well. I, I Next week, I have a little bit on what to do in a mock and how to do it in a mock as well. So that I'll discuss next week when we go over the mock. Fantastic. So, the TFA, if the answer was 6.12, would you round up or down? You wouldn't round up or down anything, but it's asking for two decimal places. If it says to the nearest whole number, or if it doesn't say anything about decimal places, then you round up or down. But it says decimal places, so your answer needs to be in two decimal places. In terms of packets, you would round up. So in terms of packets, you would round up because you can't give less than what you are supposed to give. Like, right, let's have a look at some questions. We will never do some exam, make mistakes. Yeah, so naturally, because you're making mistakes now, if you are making mistakes, that's a good thing because you learn from it and you avoid it in the exam. So 6.75 packets, anyone got any questions? If you don't give me a three, we will go forward on to question number three. Guys, I'm loving this. Every, everyone's so quick now. I remember at the start, I was like, Marvin, this group is great, but I think some webinars will go on for like two and a half hours. And he was like, is that, is that what you think? And I was like, yeah. And they were very long at the start, but we are doing more questions now. And it's taking us less time because everyone has gotten much better. So question number three, uh, what was our answer for this one, please? Fluconazole 50s are prescribed for 14 days. For a patient with invasive candidiasis, you are informed they've got a crackling clearance of 3 million and 60,000 microliters per hour. How many, how many fluconazole 50 caps will be required for the full treatment? Hind, yeah, that's right. So if it didn't say anything, you would put down seven. That's correct. Fantastic. So with this question, as always, the question will tell you which condition that you need to use. So the question tells you invasive candidiasis. So you need to use invasive candidiasis. Not this one, not this one. Don't do that. Use the invasive candidiasis. Use your dose, work out your caps, and everything is fantastic. So everyone, as, and most of us have put down 120. If you've put down 32, I think you might have realized what you've done wrong, but that's okay. So answer is 120 for this one, guys. You have to work out the creatinine clearance first. So the question, the question is based on creatinine clearance. In this, in this question, they've given we've I've given you the creatinine clearance. So it's actually a little bit easier compared to me giving you all the information. Then you have to work out the creatinine clearance. The only thing with this was I wanted to test that you are aware that creatinine clearance is in milliliters per minute. So if I manage to cut, if I manage to catch you out there, give me a one if I manage to catch you out there. So creatinine clearance is measured in milliliters per minute. So I think some of us may have learned something new there. So you have to convert your numbers to the right units and then go from there. So if you make that mistake, that's okay, but that is something that you will learn in the exam as well. So answer is 120. So you've got your creatinine clearance to the microliters per hour. 
you change it to milliliters per hour. So you're going from microliters to milliliters, you're going from small to big, you divide by 1000. So you divide by 1000. That gives us 1060, but then you need it per minute. So how do we go from hours to minutes, guys? So how do you work out hours to minutes? You divide by 60, fantastic. So 60 minutes in an hour. So 3060 divided by 60, that gets you 51. If we got 51, if you got 51, just give me a 51 if you are with me so far. Fantastic. So you've got 51, right? 51 means that you have to give 100%. So you've got your 51, it's more than 50. So 51 is more than 50. You have to give 100%. So you have to give 100% of this. You work all that out for 14 days and then you calculate your answer. So you have to read the question. You have to look back in the question and you use the right section here, like just use this right part here. So that you have to use in basic canadises and nothing else. How did you get a 51? I don't get it. That's okay. Right, Lucy, let's go through it. Lucy, why are you apologizing? If you keep saying sorry for a reason you don't need to, I'll give you a reason where you actually have to apologize. I'm only winding you up. So you have your creatinine clearance and it has to be in milliliters per minute. So it's currently in microliters per hour that needs to be converted into milliliters per minute. So that's what I've done here. That's this part here. So I hope that makes things a little bit clearer. So is that clear, Lucy? If it is, give me a three if that is clear. I'm not aggressive. I'm just very excited to be here. It's been two weeks I have missed my group. I know mom is lucky enough to do two webinars, but I didn't get the one. So uh, yeah, basically. So we need to work out for 100%. We 100% is 800 on the first day, and then it's 400 for the remaining 13 days. That gives us 6,000, 6,000 in total, 50 per capsule, 6,000 divided by 50 gives us 120. Two table 20s, and you are looking great. So is that a bit clearer now, guys? Just give me a three if that's clear. If you have any questions, please ask. Let's move forward on to question number four. So with, with, this, with these questions and with the course in general, it's great in questions, but it's great finding out stuff that you haven't, that you don't know or that you have learned. And then you learn about it later on and then you apply it to questions afterwards. Like you'd be like, oh yeah, I saw that in the course and I shouldn't do that. I should do something else instead. And you are getting better over time. Fantastic. So. If you didn't convert the creatinine clearance to milliliters per minute, you got that wrong. If you chose one of the other two and not in basic candidiasis, you got that wrong. The question is always gonna tell you the treatment, otherwise it's too ambiguous. And read the question, you'll be fantastic. So question number four, guys, let's go through the question. So you've got a patient, they are suffering from alcohol withdrawal and they are being prescribed diazepam and chlordiazepoxide. Starting at day two, how many capsules are required for the remainder? He then got a chlordiazepoxide monograph from the BNF. So what was our answer for this question, please, guys? I've got 32. 32, we've got lots of 32s so far. So you have to use day two, three, four, five, and six. You have to use five days in total. And they are 10 milligram capsules. There's two separate ways of doing this. I'll go through the way that I like personally first, and then we'll go through a second way as well. So using the table from the previous page, we have your dose, so you have 30 times four, and then you have your 20 times four, 20 times three, 10 times four, 10 times two. You add it all together, you get 320. 10 milligram capsules, you get 32 capsules. Is that a bit clearer now, guys? If it is, just give me a four, if that's a little bit clearer. If you realize now where you've gone wrong, just give me a four. So writing it all down, separating the days will help you cut out errors. If you try and do this all in your head, 
you will get it wrong, guys. You will get it wrong. So please write it all down and you will be okay. Jade, you probably had a long day at work, Jade. It's okay. It happens to us. Just remember to add and subtract on the exam day, please, Jay. That's all that matters to me. Just on that one day. If there's only one day in the entire year where you remember how to add and subtract, please make sure that it's the day when you do the exam. Please, 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 please. Please. I couldn't process how many minutes were in an hour. <laughs> oh, you guys are too funny. You guys are too funny. I'm going to miss this once this finishes. You guys are too funny. Oh, honestly, honestly, too good, too good. That's the question. Let's have a look at the question. So 30 milligrams four times a day, 20 milligrams four times a day, 20, three times a day. You get the information from the question, you work out your total and you go from there. Mozart, I was about to say, that's why you got the question wrong because I realized yeah, you had re you read it for as cute QDS and thing. Used to hate her question, but they're actually, okay, hi, that's what we like. That means you are getting better and you are going to smash this exam. Who wants another way of doing this question if you do give me a four? So another way of doing this question is basically working out the quantity first. So you have 10 milligram capsules, 10 milligram capsules, and it's four times a day. So 10 milligram capsules, 30 milligrams, so three times four, and you've got two times four, two times three, one times four, one times two. You add all that up, and that is going to give you your answer. Did anyone do it like that? If you did give me a four, that's fantastic. So different ways of doing things. I personally, and I don't know why, I just, I, I like this more, like, I just like this more. I feel like there's, I feel like, to me, I feel like it's safer, but I feel like this is quicker. That's, that's how I feel about these types of questions. So that's how I personally feel. I think you should avoid the milligrams because I can't add the milligrams. Right, that's okay as well. So just make sure you find out which way you like. You've got some time to figure out which way you like. And when you watch replays as well, you figure out which way you like most. I personally like this, but I know that some of us will like this. This is more time saving, but I think more prone to errors. But if you get it right, then that is all that counts, guys. That's all I want in the exam. Great stuff. Can we move forward to question number five? If you can, just give me a five. Hind, it's fun with you as well. I just like, you've got webinar next week. And then we do the mock two weeks after that, and then it finishes. It's a bit, it's very bittersweet. It's like, I've I had the pleasure of spending 11 weeks in total with my favorite people, but it's gonna all gonna end soon. Uh, we can chat on Telegram and stuff, but it's not the same. It's very sad. Me and Marvin get very sad at the end of the day. I know you might not believe that, but we really, really do. This question was one that we struggled with